stops them travelling, and we, we might. We yeah, might great. I mean, if you look away. But again, they'll, they'll just. Oh, all right. We're all brown. All the states all brown nosing, and they just never dare. No politician would ever dare to do it. But, but I mean, isn't it more realistic to solve the people lower down the pecking order? So I'm talking about doing it in this country. Yeah, I mean, I have to say the level of the problem in this country compared with most other places isn't, like, I mean, I know, isn't that bad. I mean, don't, don't, let, don't let me give you the impression that I'm um, complacent about it. And I did actually say on the, on the Today programme, on Christmas Eve, minutes before Benedict went on thought for the day, to say, to I have to say, Ed Sturton's absolutely open mouth that I said, well, there's nobody in the world that knows more about child abuse in the Catholic Church than Benedict does, having been appointed to be prefect of the Doctrine of the Faith in November 1981. And it, with every word, his mouth was opening further and further. It was at the sight to behold. Um, but, um, so, uh, we do have a go at it. But, but, but there's also, the, uh, as an example, Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor, well, he's, he's got a real record of covering up child abuse, which has been proven beyond doubt. The BBC launched an investigation into his activities when he was the Bishop of uh, Bright, where is it, Handel? Handel, right. right. Yeah. Mm. And he, uh, it, it was proved beyond doubt that he, he shifted this serial paedophile around. <laughs> he, didn't put, he didn't put Hill into Gatwick, but imagine putting a paedophile into, a, into a, a, an airport. You know, with uh, no, no protection for the kids. At and, all. and the uh, BBC's in investigation suddenly stopped overnight. You know, they were they were getting closer and closer to bringing him to justice, and it just stopped. And we couldn't work out why they dropped it. So years later, Keith Rain, Angus Strickland, who was the Stickland. investigative reporter who, who did all the work behind this, and said, you know. Why, why did you drop that? I don't want to comment, he said. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I don't well, know. Or, or, or Mark Thompson. You see, the, the, the church played its, its usual card during that investigation and said, you're persecuting us. You're persecuting the church. You know, they made themselves into the victim. Their usual tactic. And uh, that, that was when it all stopped. And now Murphy O'Connor has been... And what's he doing in Ireland? Do you know, do you know what job he's been given in Ireland? This doesn't make that. Go on. He's investigating the cover up of child abuse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but this persecution point's a very interesting one. I mean, I, I do, the, the, the volume of, the, of this we are being persecuted that you keep hearing it is, is getting really, really hard. Protected on the Muslims, I well then, yes, but, 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 but even from the Christians who've got no grounds whatsoever to do that, and, and they're particularly doing it over discrimination law. Precarious, actually. Well, yes, I'm precarious, and I have had a stand-up row over it, um, uh, as Terry will testify. And, and in fact, Kerry made a complete, I must think of a polite word, idiot of himself, um, where uh, he intervened in a case uh, called Avon Relate um, and Mc... McFarlane, thank you, uh, who was an a, a evangelical uh, working for Relate, the counselling organisation, who wouldn't counsel gay couples. And they said, we're an equal opportunities organisation, your contract says that you've got to do it, and we're not having it. Out. And uh, so he goes and goes to court, uh, and Carey writes to the, uh, to, to the judge, as a former Archbishop of Canterbury, saying, This is terrible the way that Christians are being treated. I want religiously uh, involved cases to go to a special panel of religiously sympathetic judges. And in that, he mounts off his rock. Well, yeah, I never thought of that. Um, so, um, fortunately, the judge, who was Lord Justice Laws, was very, who apparently is a card carrying quite high anglican, said, 
you know, if, if we don't have one law for all, we don't have anything. And we're not doing this. Um, and gave him a very hard time and, you know, picked him out and you know, held him up for ridicule. And then I, and then I, I was um, at a public event with the Archbishop of York, you know, as you are. Uh, and um, I'm afraid I rather embarrassed him by putting him right on the spot and saying, well, whose side are you on? You're a lawyer of sorts, I have to say. I mean, he doesn't seem to care anything about our obligations under the European Convention, listening to him spouting in the, in the House of Lords, where he did in the summer over the Equality Bill, where he was openly advocating not following the European Convention when it didn't suit him over gays or an organised religion absolutely disgraced um, and actually defeated the government and, and, and left our, our um, discrimination law in tatters in a way that I'm now complaining to the European Commission and I shall have the UK in the, in the European Court of Justice before I'm finished over that. But going, going back to the Archbishop of, uh, of York, um, I said to him, well, can you nail your colours to the mast? Are you, as a, as a lawyer, going to tell us that we should have a panel? of five religiously sympathetic people to, 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 to uh, try these cases of religious discrimination against people who, the rest of the population who want to be protected. And, and he didn't say, I'm glad you asked me that question. <laughs> uh, and you could see, and he was just kind of shifting in his seat and he didn't know, and in the end he said, well, I think, I'll, I, I think that judges should be religiously literate. And I didn't say anything. Uh, he said, but I, I, I'm afraid I can't go as far as um, my former archiepiscopal colleague on that, uh, i.e. he didn't back him. And I, haven't, and I spoke to Cherry Blair about it as well, and she wouldn't back him either. So I think he is actually out on a limb, but he's a very dangerous man. And he's got the Christian Institute and the so-called Christian Legal Center behind him. And I think a lot of American money, and he's fighting. I mean, the number of these cases that there are, you know, starting off with Lillian the, 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 the Daily and the Islington Registrar, the, the um, Iweeda, the uh, BA uh, woman with the, the, the cross. Terry's got, he, Terry went through the, the transcript of the case. You had some lovely things to say about her. Go on. Yeah, well, when she went to the employment tribunal complaining that she couldn't wear her cross over her uniform, the employment tribunal, I mean, before, that, before she got there, been, they had a field day in the Daily Mail and the Daily Telegraph about how she was being persecuted because of her religion. And uh, you know, she was presented as this poor little Christian woman who, who was being terribly badly treated. And when it came out in, 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 the, uh, in the tribunal, the way she behaved at BA, you know, it, it was them who were being persecuted by her. She made all kinds of demands on them. For instance, she wanted Bible reading on their in-flight entertainment. She wanted uh, the, the Christian, the BA's Christian group to be dismantled because it wasn't extreme enough for her. Um, she, uh, she was saying that all, all things... Yeah, she didn't want to work on Sunday. Even though it's a contractual yeah, degree. You know, in, in BA, everybody has to work seven, seven days a week on, on, on a shift basis. But she, no, I'm a Christian. I can't be made to work on Sunday or on Christian holidays. And uh, so she was. She was a real, a real nuisance employee. Um, but that you wouldn't have known that from reading the newspaper reports. Uh, and when it came out in court, unfortunately, they never put this report, this this account of the <coughs> tribunal up on the web, so you can't see that. I had to get a printed copy. But um, it, it was just horrendous the way she carried on. And she's appealed it and appealed it and appealed it and lost every time. And I now read that she tried to take it to the European Court of Human Rights. Um, she will not let up, and she's a real obsessive, uh, but she doesn't have a case, you know, and she will not accept it. She thinks she's paying for it. Yeah, she's being paying for it. No, she's being oh, no, supported by, oh. by these Christian groups right. who, whose source of income is rather. Mm. They have a lot, rather longer pockets uh, than we have. Why well, does the BA have a Christian group, you said? Right of us, it, it, right you know, it's, it's a big, big organisation. They, they have, you know, it's like the police have a Christian group and local authorities well, have employees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, all the employees can join it, can they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> but, but talking about these kind of cases, perhaps. But why wouldn't she allow to wear a cross? Well, she 
question. She was allowed to wear a cross, but it had to be underneath her uniform. If she was on the front desk, where the, 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 there's, there's some arguing about this, but the, the, the position I believe it to be was this: she was on the front desk. And there's two possible issues. One is, I'm shoving Christianity in your, your face as a, as a Muslim customer and or moving machinery. She was allowed to wear it underneath her, uh, her, her um, uniform and or go have a backroom job and have it outside. But if Muslims are allowed to wear headscarves and Sikhs are allowed to wear turbans? And this, this was her argument, the fact that you know, these were... were the, the, it may have been the, the, the health court, and safety thing to yeah, do with no, the no, the, court, the court actually said that, um, that Muslims and Sikhs have a, a religious obligation, whereas Christians don't have an obligation to wear jewellery yeah, of this kind. That was part of the judgment. That was part of, part of the reasoning of the judgment. The other one was that no, no other Christian had claimed to be discriminated against. And so therefore, there was nothing to, to compare it with. Um, where and you know the argument, I suppose that it's easy to say you know well they can wear their hijabs and everything. The hijabs are, are made to match the rest of the uniform, but um, you know she was she could have wear, worn that that cross underneath her uniform if she wanted. She actually said at the at the tribunal, I want to tell people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a, a proselytizing um, thing that she wanted to do with this cross. Wasn't any kind of, you know. I mean, if you're a Christian wearing it under your clothes, you know you've got your cross on. It's there, and you can't. Show. You don't have to have it on show unless you're using it for proselytizing, which is what she wanted to do. I'm very interested in what you said about that undercover um, half war program <coughs> because a couple of weeks ago I missed the dispatches from my lessons in hate and violence, and I tried to find it on the 4 D and couldn't. And a friend of mine sent me a link. Checked out, and it is now just saying it's not going to show my priority, or at least not at the moment, because of ongoing police investigations. Now, I assumed that, that was ongoing police investigations into the Muslim school that it had been about, but now you've made me think maybe it's ongoing police investigations. Yeah, into the yeah. Well, actually, it was into a school, actually. Yes, of course, they went and actually right. interviewed the right. rest of the school. Right. Yeah. They arrested yeah. him. I mean, that, that the violence was good. Oh, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen oh, it yet. Yeah. 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 They were kicking the kids. Yeah, it's horrible. So that was actually a piece of investigation into, yeah. into Can you give me your address, I'll send you a copy. Oh. It is. <laughs> um, but on the subject of, of, are you going to mention Ocean Eyes? I think we might as well talk about that a little bit. Well, which one is that? Biddeford. Oh yes, the, the, the Biddeford case, which is about council prayers. Um, I mean, obviously, as secularists, we don't think that religion should play any part in the democratic process. It should be secular. And local authorities, a majority of them, according to the research that's been done by our members, start their meetings with prayers, um, not sort of separated from Not pre-meeting, pre -meeting, it actually, actually on the agenda, prayers. So we thought it's time for, for this to be challenged. And the majority, the majority of councils that yeah. do it, to my astonishment. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we've launched a case... We had a complaint, in fact we had several complaints, but one complaint in particular from a council in Biddeford in Devon, from a councillor who made a fuss about it and said, I don't, you know, I don't want to be part of this. Why are you making me pray? You know, I'm, I'm doing my democratic duty as a citizen and being part of the council, and you're forcing me to pray. And they're saying, no, you can just sit there and, and, and you know, not do anything. Um, but you know, people should be put into that position. Uh, so we we together with the councillor, have launched a case uh, against Liverpool as a test to try and make them back down on that. The Christian Institute has stepped in to finance the council's well, case. Well, we think they have. I mean, certainly they're supporting it. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but they have said, they've said <coughs> they will pay their expenses if, if they... Well, but the solicitors have yeah. technically yeah. indemnified them, but we're pretty sure the Christian Institute is yeah. standing behind the, 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 the uh, so, solicitors. Uh, uh, we, we're waiting <coughs> for a date for the judicial review. Which it should, won't be long. I mean, we're a good way through this. I mean, this process of the High Court. So we're starting fairly high. I think we might end up at the Intergalactic Court. So we're starting, starting high. They won't, they, won't, they won't let this go easily. <coughs> Neither will we. Uh, during the week, I, I can't remember during what talk, but it was mentioned that even some of the church circles have 